it is a good idea for you to review these notes before starting the lesson. Again, you can download these notes and the practice problems at my website. In this circuit, which of the two resistors consumes more power? Because the two resistors are in series, they get the same current. So this equation should be the most convenient to use. Power equals to I squared R, I being the constant for both resistors. That means the power is proportional to R. So the larger the R, the more the power it consumes. What about this one? They are in parallel, they get the same voltage. So this equation is the most convenient. So the power is proportional to 1 over R because V squared is the same. So the 3 ohms, the one with the smaller resistance, consumes more power. Remember we talked about this unit, kilowatt hour. It is kilowatt times the hour. So this is a unit for energy because the kilowatt is a unit for power. Hour is a unit for time. Power times time gives us energy. So let's say if you have 60 watt light bulb and you keep it on for 24 hours, the amount of energy it consumes in kilowatt hour would be 0 0.06 kilowatt times 24 hours. So the energy it consumes will be 1.44 kilowatt hour. When we draw a battery in a circuit, we treat that battery as an ideal battery, which means it has no resistance, it only provides a voltage, the EMF. But a real battery has in internal resistance. So we can consider a real battery as a, an ideal battery plus a internal resistance. So this is the real battery, which means that the real battery provides a voltage across the two terminals, which may or may not be the same as the EMF. So the terminal voltage, the voltage across the two terminals of a battery is the EMF minus the voltage we lose to the internal resistance. The voltage across the resistance is the I times R, which means that these two would be the same. The terminal voltage would equal to the EMF only if there is no current in the circuit. And because the entire battery is in parallel with the load resistance, that means this is also the voltage across the load resistance. So this is the I times the load resistance. So the higher the current in this circuit, the lower the terminal voltage the battery can provide. Let's find the current in each resistor and the current that goes through the battery. In this circuit, we have two segments that are in parallel, and they're in parallel with the battery. That means each segment gets the same voltage, 20 volts. So this segment gets 20 volts, this segment gets 20 volts. Since we know the voltage, we only have to look at one segment at a time. So this segment, 20 volts, 3 plus 7, 10 ohms. So the current is 20 divided by 10, 2 amps. So the current in the 3 ohms and the current in the 7 ohms are the same 2 amps. And this one here, the current in the 5 ohms is the voltage 20 divided by 5 ohms, so it's 4 amps. And both of the currents come from the battery. The battery's current comes over here and is split into 2 and a 4, so the current going through the battery is 6, ohms, uh, six amps. Now I'm adding a 2 nanofarad capacitor to this part of the circuit. It has been connected for a long time. How much charge is on this capacitor? After a long time, the capacitor has been fully charged, so no more current is in this segment. That means that we can cut the wires and take the capacitor away and nothing will be different. That means the current in the rest of the circuit is still the same as before.
but of course this capacitor is still connected to it so to find the charge on the capacitor we do Q equals to CV the capacitance is 2 nano the voltage it gets is the same as the voltage across the 3 ohms because they are in parallel they get the same voltage the voltage across a resistor here is I times R so this is 2 nano the current through the 3 ohm resistor is 2 amps the resistance of course is 3 ohms so this gives us 2 nano times 6 volts 12 nanocoulombs